Hello everyone, welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Hope you all are having a blessed day. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for everything you have given us, Father God. We ask you to forgive us of the sins we've done. Father God, we ask you today to be with us as we read your word, Father God. Help us apply it to our lives, Father God. Help us be hearers and doers of your word, Father God. Father God, we also ask you today, Father God, to help us to be more like you have a christ-like mind father god father god we ask you to bless the ones that are reading it and bless the ones that are listening in jesus mighty name amen so this is the last day our memory verse first corinthians six fourteen, and god raised the lord and also raised us up by his power first corinthians six fourteen. verse of the day second timothy four and three for the time will come when people would not intolerate sound doctrine instead to suit their own desires they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear second timothy four and three subject drought of itchy ears christian truths i'm gonna say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like i don't have itchy ears i'm reading my word i'm hearing god i'm waiting for god the read time of the devotion is nine minutes and 54 seconds this week we glazed over the topic deceit what is deceit Western dictionary says it means behavior deliberately tended to make people believe something untrue one morning while i was praying I heard the Holy Spirit tell me this is one of many spirits sweeping through the country. Deceit. He said people want pastors and teachers who would mis misrepresent the truth. They don't want people who are grounded in the word. They want people they that look or play the role, but that's it. When people meet people that won't misrepresent it, they don't care to listen to it. Because you're in the last because because we're in the last and evil days, people want teachers that will give them things for their itchy ears. Second Timothy four and three. For the time will come when people would not tolerate doctrine instead to suit their own desires, they would gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. He said, when these people hear the truth of what they're doing, they get angry because they know the truth is there, but they don't want to hear it. They either pretend like it's not there or yield to God. He said, people in this world yield to a lie quicker than they to the truth. He said, Lou, walk in the truth and teach the truth. Second, Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last day. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abrasive disobedient to their parents ungrateful unholy without love unforgiving slanderous without self-control brutal not lovers of good treacherous rash conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god having a form of godliness but denying the power have nothing to do with such people it says here that there will be lovers of themselves they will love themselves so much that they won't care about what's happening in their lives whether right or wrong <clears throat> many of us know we are wrong and need god's strength but some people feel that no matter what they're what no matter what they're right and everyone else is wrong including god the bible even says that some of them will have a form of godliness that means they will be lukewarm christians or not believers at all they have their own agenda they will walk around thinking they know what is right but they aren't they will have no power no access to god because they have they are too busy making themselves feel correct the bible says don't dabble around with these people don't be friends with them don't talk to them don't try to correct them beware if they aren't listening to god why would they listen to you so leave it leave them be it verse 7 always learning always learning but never coming to a knowledge of truth these people will see and will always be reading studying seeking things of knowledge but knowledge won't be given to them because they don't want the truth they want a form of knowledge to seem like they are seeking christ and they are seeking another opportunity another door to open that isn't the truth these same people will, will have a veil over their eyes they will we talked about the veil. The veil is placed over the eyes of people that are not ready to accept the truth. Second Corinthians three fourteen through sixteen. But their minds were made dull. For the same veil remains when the Old Testament is read. It has not been removed because it is only taken away in Christ. Even today, when Moses read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. See, their minds are dull, and the only way is to remove it is by Christ. But when they turn to God, their veil will be taken away. God isn't going to reveal himself to anyone who won't accept the truth. The deceitful person is always going to deny the power of God because they don't want anyone telling them they are wrong with their mindset. They're, <clears throat> they are wrong with their actions because if they listen and obtain the power of truth, they just for a minute, they will be offended. The people of this world is very offended quickly. That's why if you ask someone or ask people if they read the Bible... And not just glazed over it, but truly read it, read over it. 
they tell you no because you won't find any error when you just read over it but when we generally study the word there's no room for maybes there's no room for nothing because the bible doesn't give us any wiggle room and when we proclaim to be the son or daughter of christ we must accept what jesus says and what he's saying today this seat is something that is sweeping this country because people either accept something they don't understand or listen to someone that that doesn't make sense because then they don't have to accept the word of god verse 17 now the lord is the spirit and the word the spirit is the spirit of the lord is there's liberty friends is freedom in the word of god there's truth in it and when we put on the arm of god or read the word of god we will see that we can be set free from our sins many people want to be told it's okay to do this it's okay to do that and blame their sins and and blame to blame this sin for this sin and but sin is sin if you dabble in sin you must let go of it and confess it quickly when we don't do either we will save the seed by everyone who tells us it's okay to do this and they define it as okay to sin it's not okay to sin stay active in our lives it's not okay for sin to stay active in our lives we must deny the power of sin has over us and accept the truth of god this week we talked about how anything will slow down the anointing one of the reasons is that we have sin in our lives. The anointing won't flow in our lives with sin. We can think it will let it we can think it will and let it remain, but friends, it won't. God will remove this. He doesn't have to let us keep it. Look at Saul. Saul had the kingdom snatched from his hands because he was disappointed. He was stripped of God's anointing. And if we are going to continue in the lifestyle sin, we will be stripped of it. We have moments in our lives that we will go through. Sometimes God wants us to be silent. And many of us can't be silent for five minutes. But God calls us to sit and wait for him to tell us when to speak and defend ourselves. We can't get so offended that we start talking when God says silence. The Bible says the Lord will fight for you. You will only need to be still and silent. The Lord will fight for us. All we must do is sit silent. God doesn't want us to be a punching bag or a doormat. But he does want us to remain quiet in some situations so that he can protect us and make us make the situation right. If we are fussing and fighting and doing everything else, we will permanently lose until we sit silent. One night, one thing, one last thing, I'm sorry, we discussed this week is vows and oaths. Our no need, our, our no, our, let our no's be no. We must live a lifestyle where people know we are telling the truth when they hear us speak. They don't have to say to us, do you swear? We should be at the place in our lives. If we say no, people know we mean it. If we say yes, they know we mean that too. To live this way is to live in a way that professes God. Don't allow what people do or say to taint what you represent with God. Our mouths need to be salt of the earth and not destruction of words. Today, we learn about the seat and how when we want to hear half the truth or no truth at all, we are trying to protect our feelings. But the Bible's meant to hurt your feelings. It's meant to penetrate your heart and change us and show us what we don't need in our life. Have you ever had a plant that plant and that plant only grows when we pour water and fertilizing it? But when we overwater a plant, we can also kill the plant. See, sometimes we don't have to use poison to kill anything. Sometimes it's the small things we, we do we don't realize that can kill it. A lot of times what keeps people in sin, rather have, rather, they rather have someone pour the seat into their lives or want someone to give them what they don't need than to hear they don't need it. But every time we read the word, it's pouring what we need in our lives. It's pouring more joy into our lives. It's pouring more knowledge into our lives. Still, when we refuse to accept it, we die spiritually. Don't let your itchy ears lead you to a spiritual death. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, forgive us if we rather hear the falseness when the truth helps us accept the truth in, in your will, in your way. Lord, we love you so much for everything. We ask you to give us strength in your love. Lord, help us to be more like you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Reference, Galatians 4.16. Have I become your enemy by telling you the truth? Galatians 4.16. Luke 6 and 26. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for their fathers did did to their false prophets luke 6 and 26 jeremiah 5 and 31 the prophet prophesied falsely in the prophets in the in the priests rule, rule at their direction my people love to have it so but what will you do when the end comes jeremiah 5 and 31 for the reading proverbs 10 leviticus 10 joshua 22 and second samuel 19 this ends 
drought of itchy ears. I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow on any platform. Remember to share with a family member or a friend. If you can, share on social media. If you have time, please go like us on YouTube. Thank you. Be blessed.